currently walking into the Ray Pullins uh, trailer here looking for Dean Jacobs. We figured out last night, ladies and gentlemen, why they call him the wiener, because he laid it out and jumped on it last night, destroying <laughs> destroying Guy Webb's two-seater. Uh, uh, real quick, Dean, was that something you were looking forward to do there? Well, they told me they wanted the girl to her pants, so I made her get her pants right in the back seat of that two-seater. And let me tell you, I mine too. <laughs> Car number 19. Smith very smooth through turns three and four off the cushion. A monster wheel stand for Stevie Smith at a 14.492. 14.492 for car 19, Stevie Smith. Bill Rose on the high side. Lots of scrambling throughout the field. Bill Rose escapes with a lead. Hang on, Eddie Levitt Jr. That was a humming up. From Eunice, Louisiana, the Cajun sensation, Jason Johnson. Couple of veterans on the front row, Herrera and Schaefer. Great flag flies, let's do it. Down to turn one, Johnny Herrera with the lead, goes right to the cushion. Hang on, Brian Brown. Red on the speedway, Brian Brown looping the car in turn one. Jesse Gennetto, nowhere to go, gets in the back of him and flips. In front of the DNF, and Wicked Tucker down the front bridge, and Tucker right behind. Oh, again, please, Kirk, get down with this one turn into the wall. Turn the final time, Chad Kimenaugh picks up your United Aluminum Windows B main. If you're back there screwing around and you miss your heat rate, just plan on running the sea or the beat because we're not waiting tonight because you all know Jim Ford's just waiting that you are asked for something. And I'm not taking one for you guys. I'll take one when I need to, but not for just because you're screwing around. Still holding off that fourth and final transfer spot as now Ford Allen trying to get up into the mix in the 88 car. That trouble in turn number three.
Oh, welcome to a Fremont Speedway, All-Star Soccer Champion. This is a little commentary on the on the end on the uh, helmet situation. The brain bucket. That's what happens when you get hit by a 200 mile an hour rock. Because if you think about it. If I'm going 100 miles an hour this way, and a rock comes off of your car 100 miles an hour this way, and it hits this helmet, that's a 200 mile an hour rock. Thank God for Simpson, that's all I got to say. Just keep sending wankers like Jacobs out. We'll be okay. I'll, I'll make some money. Oh, look out down the front chute, nearly getting together. Oh, Justin Henderson upside down in turn number one. The Mississippi Missile. Hey Howard! That ain't him. What the fuck? They all look the same. I think well, I think California should uh, hire this guy's governor as much as he's politic in here. All right, the Mississippi missile. Hopefully, he won't misfire here tonight, Reese fans. As long as I don't have to hang around Brian Kimmon, all I'm all right. Uh oh, that's a shot. <laughs> Chad, uh, first of all, do you think you have a shot in hell at winning tonight? Not a, sh not even a snowball's chance in like, um, where are we at here? Uh, hell. Yeah, we're right in hell. Yeah, we're right in hell. John Aiken in third spot, Hefner in the fourth spot, Bill Rose in fifth as we have trouble. Marte's up and over in between turns three and four. Come on, Clapper. Two up on top. Kenny Jacobs works the bottom. Greg Wilson working down low. Jess Shepard showing the nose underneath the 15 of Kimenoff. The battle for fifth on the track. Greg Wilson takes over second from Kenny Jacobs. Wilson with a nice move on the bottom as he'll try and run down your leader, Craig Kinzer. Craig Wilson with the run off turn number two. He'll give it one more shot in three and four. Kinzer has to deal with some black cars. A battle for the lead. Your new leader, Craig Wilson. Wilson used the top line to take the lead. Kinzer will fight back on the bottom side by side down the back stretch. Left cars all over in front of your leaders. Craig Wilson up on top. He is your new leader. Craig Kinzer to second. Kenny Jacobs third. Chad Kimmon on fourth and Dale Blaney your top five. <laughs> I'll tell you what, ever since the historical big one, uh, me and Ham found something with this race car and this Maxim chassis is liking it. Uh, I, like, I want to thank the good Lord above for watching out for us all and uh, getting our race program back on track. Three laps to go for Randy Hannigan's first career all-star feature event win as they come off turn number two. Hannigan having trouble with Bill Ross. Here comes Paul May. May to the inside as he'll take the lead down in turn number three. Paul May in the yellow and black 71M, your new leader as Montgomery gets by the hurricane as well. Hannigan goes from first to third. Now Montgomery trying for the lead, not gonna happen off turn two. Paul May turns three and four as he'll celebrate his birthday with his first career all-star feature event win. Shepard looks 
looks like he could be out of fuel, race fans. We'll have to check the official finish. We saw the checker flag fly. Shepard was the first car across the line. Awaiting the arrival of Jeff Shepard tonight's win, ran out of fuel after the feature event as he goes on to the scales. We'll check the weight. 1,422 pounds, no trouble. Jeff Shepard, your feature event winner here tonight. Was a little scared after the feature event, thinking he wouldn't make weight because that car ran out of fuel as he took the white flag. Jeff Shepard had a little trouble at the end of the race. Ran out of fuel, man, but he still made weight. Nice job. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I was very nervous about that. It's a shame, you know, we want to win every race we can. I hate to, I hate to win one like that because it, it kind of costs more than what we made, but uh, we won it. You know, we're happy about that. We haven't won a race in a while, and uh, we're keeping our streak alive at this racetrack. Anyway. As they come out of turn number four, race fans, there's the Circuit of Champions. Four wide salute to the race fans complete here. The 81 Speedway. Let's go to the top. Shane Stewart will try the outside off turn number two. Side by side in a turn number three. Stewart on the outside. Jeremy Campbell on the bottom. Campbell hugging down the bottom off turn number four, but here comes Mr. Sprint. Shane Stewart on the outside, Jeremy Campbell on the bottom, side by side as they'll race through one and two. Give the lead to Shane Stewart. Green flag in the air, here we go. Stewart will go right to the top, here comes Jeremy Campbell. Campbell trying to slide job on Shane Stewart as they race side by side down the back stretch. Stewart into the 10th seat. Now Jeremy Campbell will go to the bottom. A great race up turn number four. Here comes Shane Stewart. Stewart will lead him off a big wheel stand for Jeremy Campbell. And here comes the Aussie Brook Tatnall. Tatnall running around the rim. He'll go around the 10th C of Jeremy Campbell and take over second. Brook Tatnall off turn number two. Jen Howard fighting it out with a 70 car. As Jason Johnson will try to go to the outside of Chad coming on. And Brook Tatnall will take over second. Jason Johnson with a great move around the outside. Outside, Shane Stewart trying to work the middle. Look at Jason Johnson. Here he comes on the outside, right around the Shane Stewart car number four him to take the lead. Jason Johnson takes it around the four M. Now Shane will fight back on the bottom off turn number two. Stewart will retake the lead. The two cars for the lead battle and Jason Johnson. He's not worried about the tire on the right rear, that's for sure, as they come off turn number four. Jason Johnson in second, trying the outside on the four. Emma Shane Stewart side by side on four. Now Stewart will lead him as they work a lap number 27. Working lap 28, that is 27 in the books. Jason Johnson the outside of Shane Stewart is a battle into turn three and four. Jason Johnson will lead again in down in turn number one. Shane Stewart second. Now Johnson will slowly speed where that is. Turn number four, your winner, Jason Johnson. Shane Stewart will finish second, Jeff Shepard third, fourth, Chad Kevin on fifth, Travis Ryland. Whoa, what a race. 24 cars and all stars on the track getting ready to battle for 40 laps. Let them hear you out of race, Wayne Park. The All Star Circuit of Champions. Kevin off still your leader. Todd Kane now on the bottom. Mark Keegan side by side down the back shoot. Keegan up on the cushion, Todd Kane on the bottom. They'll make a race out of all of turn number four. Look at Kemenov. Kemenov jumps the cushion on turn four. Now look at Kane. Kane out of turn number two off the bottom. He'll get by the 15K and take over the lead. Todd Kane coming out of the beam aim. Now Kemenov comes back on the bottom. Todd Kane, the man on a mission here tonight. He'll take over the lead, running right around the bottom. Coming on back to second. Mark Keegan third. Now Byron Reed will try to take over third from Keegan. Chad Kemenow, your current all-star point leader, looking to add to that margin. Now he'll shoot to the inside again and take over the lead in turn number one. Kane on the back. He'll shoot over turn two and retake the lead. Kane out front. Chad Kemenow second. Jeff Shepard running the rim in third. We continue to watch the battle for the lead. Kane 
right behind the three of Lander as Kamenov hangs it up at turn number two. Now trouble for your leader, Todd Kane. Kane gets in high and hard at turn number three and loops it up. Oh my gosh. Night number one, Ohio Sprint Speed Week. Chad Kamenov takes the win. Second spot, Myron Reed. Third, the Jeff Shepard. Fourth, card number 72, Dale Blaney. And fifth, the nine of Rob Cheney. Out of turn number four, it's time to get dirty with the all-star circuit of champions presented by Hallmark.com trailers and motor coaches. Let's do it! Three wide down in turn number one. Nick Neighbor on the top. Look at Kimono on the bottom. Bill Rose up in the fence. Nick Neighbor will lead him down into turn number three. Kimono second. He'll drive the bottom off turn number four. Nick Neighbor will lead lap number one. Chad Kimono second. KC Kane to third. A battle for the lead. Chad Kimono turn number two. Chad Kimenaugh to the inside of your leader. He'll take the lead. Chad Kimenaugh will lead lap number two. Nick Neighbor not giving up as he'll try the top side. Nick Neighbor up above the cushion off turn two. Casey Kane into third. Win here at the 49th anniversary race. He leads him off turn number four. Here comes Casey Kane. He'll get by Nick Neighbor for second. Casey Kane, your fast time qualifier in the second spot. Nick Neighbor third. Jonathan Aller fourth. The Mississippi Missile, Jan Howard in the fifth spot. Oh, front, Casey Kane second. Greg Wilson, Jonathan Aller, Dale Blaney, Dean Jacobs having a good run. Jonathan Aller above the cushion. He'll get in the fence on turn number four. Aller to get into the fence down on the front stretch. He'll stop down at turn number one. Now Jacobs will try the top. Mark Kinzer moving into the mix as well. So we have a chase for the lead off turn four. Casey Kane will take the lead down at turn number one. Kane around the rim as he pulls away from the 15K, Chad Kimenaw. Mark Kinzer looking to the inside of Dale Blaney. Can't pull off the slide job. Three wide in turn one. Now trouble for the YouTube Kevin Huntley. and we'll look to the inside of Chad Kimenaugh. Here comes the slide job. He'll move into second. Greg Wilson into second. Now Kimenaugh will try the slider back on Wilson. Mark Kinzel will move into fourth spot. Wilson will take to the inside of Kimenaugh in between turns three and four. Wilson, a nice job up there as he'll move into second. Now Kimenaugh will fight back on the bottom. All alone out front. No worries for the 83 Beef Packer car. He'll pick up his first all-star win of the season. Car 83, Casey Kane. Second, the 63 of Greg Wilson. Chad Kimenaugh will finish third. Mark Kinzer fourth and rounding out your top five. Car number 29, Dean Jacobs. Such a long weekend here at Eldora. You gonna try to do the whole deal? Oh, yeah, definitely. We got uh, Dennis Roth giving us such a good race car to race. And, um, you know, to come out here with all the all-stars outlaws, the historical big one, it's a, it's a great weekend, so we're going to do all we can to stay here all weekend long and have a good time. Dale Blaney, your current leader, as he'll work turns one and two. The Jet Shepard right behind the red 72 car. At the new Fremont Speedway, the track in action via Dale Blaney, a two-time All-Star Sprint Car champion. He'll lead him off turn four, but here comes Shepard. Shepard on the bottom of the race. Turns one and two right behind the lady in red, trying to put Aaron Crocker one lap down. Shepard will take the lead. Momentarily in turn number three, Dale Blaney has been running right through the middle of the track. Shepard elect to run down low. Shepard, your current leader, Dale Blaney out on top. Now Blaney will go right by the 92 car and retake the lead. Shepard with the wheel stand off turn two and he'll fight down at turn three. Dale Blaney, your current leader, Jeff Shepard second as they work past the slower 16C of Aaron Crocker. Shepard now off the bottom in turn number four as they're side by side. At the start finish line, Dale Blaney continues to lead. Shepard with the runoff turn two as he'll try and take the lead over in turn number three. Two veterans battling out here at the track that action built the new Fremont Speedway. Shepard running down low, still on the bottom as he'll bounce off the cushion down low. No trouble 
for the three of Jason Dukes. The Interstate Truck Repair car number three comes to a stop just behind turns one and two, hits the soft wall. So a pair of veterans doing battle here at the new Fremont Speedway. As Dale Blaney still is your leader, Shepard in second. Blaney relentless running right through the slick part of the track. Shepard on the bottom, big run off turn two. Here comes the jet. Jeff Shepard taking the lead down in turn number three. Blaney now he'll slide up to the cushion. Your new leader, car number 92, Jeff Shepard. So as we're about to take the green flag, the 72 of Dale Blaney comes to a stop on the back stretch. Blaney could possibly be out of fuel. Tough break for the 72, but a good break for the 15 of Chad Kimenaugh. That'll put him second. So Jeff Shepard will lead him to the stripe. Chad Kimenaugh second as he'll race down in turn number one. Green flag flies. Your defending all-star champion goes to the top side. He'll go by Shepard and take the lead. Chad Kimenaugh looking for 10,000 big ones here tonight. Shepard back to second as he'll try to cushion off turn number four. Kimenaugh is gone. No work turn three and four looking for the checkered flag this time by $10,000 Richards, Chad Kimenaugh. Kimenaugh will get the win. Shepard will come home second. And third will be the 9X of Rob Cheney. You know, me and Dale and Jeff, just we all three had a hell of a good race there. And just a really, really good race for 50 laps to be that close. That says a lot for Fremont Speedway. Were you worried at all about losing fuel at the end of the race when you saw Blaney park it there off of uh, off the back stretch? Nah, uh, about a month ago, we put a big fuel tank on. We fixed that problem. We had too many close calls. So these long fuel deals, I mean, we'll take them. Real, crack, uh, real quick, that is on the race car. Your brother Brian got it hooked up. I mean, you could put that thing wherever you wanted. Yeah, on that long, you know, he just had that thing dialed in really, really good. You know, he was good last night at KC and just got stuck there behind a couple guys and KC was really fast and it was hard to pass. But tonight, the fans got a really, really good show, you know, and that's something they can talk about all winter. That's what it's all about, race fans. He's Your 10th place owner driver competed in 32 of 46 events on the 2003 All-Star schedule and made his unmistakable presence felt at each and every one of them. The season saw the 1983 All-Star Rookie of the Year in victory lane on two separate occasions by winning at Fremont Speedway and Wayne County Speedway during the annual Ohio Sprint Speed Week on June 30th. Finishing the year with one Huggins Cam's fast time effort, two Hallmark Dash victories, three Pete Race wins, and 18 top 10 feature finishes in all. The owner driver of the Roto Chopper, Kinzer Timber, Crone Lumber, number 4K, finishing 10th in points from Bloomington, Indiana, Kelly Kinzer. This year's ninth place team moved up two positions from the 2002 championship chase and cracked the top 10 for the first time in all-star competition. Despite being underfunded, the DJ safety equipment entry managed to compete in 34 events on the 2003 all-star campaign. Always ready to offer a smile even in the most difficult of times, this former Fremont Speedway most improved driver managed to put his Bob Evans Eagle in the feature 11 times during the year with season best finishes of 16th at 81 Speedway in Wichita, Kansas, as well as grabbing 18th on three separate occasions. May I introduce your 2003 ninth place team. The owner of the Steinies Three Oaks Tavern, number 98, Mr. Robert Robinall. And his driver from Tiffin, Ohio, please welcome Bruce Robinall. Your 2003 eighth place owner driver improved two spots from his 2002 finish in the season-long championship chase. Competing in all but 11 events on the year, the Countryside Truck Service Team persevered through some hard times during the season, including a hard crash at the Knoxville Raceway on August 1st, as well as enduring many mechanical troubles to post their highest finish ever in the season-long title chase. 
putting the Sander engineering entry into the show eight times during the year. This driver had season best finishes of 14th at Eldora's 49th anniversary race and 18th at the Delta Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your eighth place owner driver, piloting the Brower Racing Engines number 63R from Burton, Ohio, Mr. Barry Rubal. Your 2002 All-Star Rookie of the Year returned to the circuit for his second full season and saw quite an improvement in the 2003 campaign. During the year, this 38-year-old had many impressive runs, including winning the Hallmark Dash at Eldora Speedway on June 28th and ended the night with a solid seventh place finish. Seven days later, the KJM trucking team once again put the Eagle chassis into victory lane during the running of the Hallmark Dash at Portsmouth Raceway Park on July 5th and finished the night up in eighth place after leading the first two laps of the race. Finishing the year with totals of two Hallmark Dash victories, two heat race wins, one B-Main triumph, and five top 10 feature finishes. Please welcome your 2003 seventh place owner driver, steering the Double J Construction, Rose Excavating number 6R from Plainfield, Indiana, Bill Rose. This duo started the 2003 All-Star Circuit as a team, but spent a few months apart in the spring before re-teaming for the final 25 events of the year to grab sixth place in the title chase. The York Excavating entry posted an impressive record of 34 top 10 finishes, including four feature victories that came at East Bay, Butler, Delta Bowl, and the Mid-Nebraska Raceway during the running of the annual Thunder Through the Plains. This gave the 32-year-old his 36th career All-Star triumph. With season totals of one Huggins Cam's Fast Qualifier Award, 10 Heat Race victories, two B-Main wins, and 25 top five feature finishes in all, the owner of the Imperial Package, Edge Racing Alcohol number 92, please welcome Mr. Denny Ashworth and his driver from Upper Cove, Maryland, the Jet, Jeff Shepard. The All-Stars newest face on the scene came in the form of our Canadian counterpart who emerged from the pavement ranks to run full time with the series in 2003. Competing at all 46 events on the schedule, the 24-year-old freshman managed to impress fans and peers alike on many occasions and showed great improvement each week. Running with the leaders at times during the year, the MSA entry season was highlighted by three different sixth-place feature finishes, which came at the Mid-Nebraska Raceway, Butler Speedway, and the Jet Moore Motorplex. Finishing the year with six heat race wins, three B-Main victories, and 34 top 10 feature finishes in all. The owner of the VSN Patco Transportation number 6C, finishing fourth in points, Mr. Warren Conium, and his driver, finishing fifth in points, your 2003 All-Star Circuit of Champions Rookie of the Year from Burlington, Ontario, Canada, Ryan Conium. Continuing their long association as a team, the next duo had an up and down season, but managed to score their third consecutive top five finish in the year-long point standings. 
Highlights of their season included 10 top five feature finishes, which included a hard fought victory over Craig Kinzer at the KC Raceway in Chillicothe, Ohio on September 5th, as well as two wins at Attica Raceway Park on the year. The latter of which was a victory at the prestigious Attica Ambush that came after a battle royale with John Ivey and Jason Johnson in the closing laps. This brought the American race tire driver his 12th career all-star triumph. Finishing the year with two Huggins Cams Fast Time Awards, two Hallmark Dash wins, six Heat Race victories, three B-Main triumphs, and 24 top 10 feature finishes in 44 starts. The owner of the Barfield Gift Groups, Lima Auto Mall, number 63, finishing fifth in owner points. Please welcome Mr. Bob Hampshire. And your fourth place driver, from Benton Ridge, Ohio, G-Dub himself, Greg Wilson. This tandem had a successful season together and ended up with an impressive third place finish in the All-Star Championship Series. Competing in all but one event on the year, the 1999 All-Star Series runner-up had a consistent season, running in the top five in feature competition in one out of every four starts. Most notably, the Attica Raceway Park back bunch put it in victory lane on three occasions, with victories at Jetmore, Hobstock, and the new Capitol Speedway in Holt Summit, Missouri on July 25th. This brought the 39-year-old his 22nd career All-Star triumph, taking home a total of two Huggins Cams Fast Times, three Hallmark Dash victories, eight Heat Race wins, and 25 top 10 feature finishes in all. The owner of the Waverly Quick Clue, Pike Supply number 29, Ray Pullins. And your third place driver from Worcester, Ohio, please welcome Mr. Dean Jacobs. Teaming together for the 2003 campaign, this next duo had their most successful year in all-star competition. Starting the year off right, they posted a victory at Volusia Speedway on February 7th during Florida Speed Week's competition. Feature victories also came at Sharon Speedway and the new Fremont Speedway on July 3rd during the running of the annual Ohio Sprint Speed Week series. Two nights later, the Grieber Racing Components car came back to victory lane at Portsmouth Raceway Park for their fourth win of the season. A victory at 81 Speedway in Wichita, Kansas on August 22nd marked the seventh career all-star victory for the 26-year-old pilot and tied him for the series lead in Hallmark.com feature win for the year. With four Huggins Cams Quick Time Awards, four Hallmark Dash wins, nine Heat Race Triumphs, two B-Main victories, and scoring 26 top 10 feature finishes in 46 starts. The owner of the Harrison Trucking number 22, Mr. Al Harrison, and his driver, finishing second in points from Eunice, Louisiana, the Cajun sensation, Jason Johnson. Your defending All-Star Championship team ended up right where they left off in 2002 as King of the All-Stars. The 2003 season saw the American Augers back team rack up an impressive record during the 46 race All-Star campaign by leading all drivers in every category of competition. But it wasn't just victories that brought the Cure Speed Shop special its second consecutive title as it racked up a whopping 39 top 10 feature finishes in 46 attempts. 
This included 11 third place finishes, four runner-up positions, and a total of five feature event wins on the year, including early season victories at Attica and Tunica, as well as a win at the 49th anniversary race at Earl Baltes' famed Eldora Speedway on June 28th after starting seventh. The next night, the Pro Shocks car bounced back into victory lane by winning the opening round of Ohio Sprint Speed Week at Attica Raceway Park. However, the highlight of the season was undoubtedly a victory at the track that Action built, the new Fremont Speedway on September 6th. Following a race-long duel with Dale Blaney and Jeff Shepard, the Kistler-powered Eagle grabbed the $10,000 winner's share in the running of the 50-lap feature. Finishing the year with season totals of seven Huggins Cam's Fast Time efforts, eight Hallmark Dash wins, 13 Heat Race Triumphs, five B-Main wins, and an astonishing 30 top five feature finishes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2003 and now two-time defending All-Star Championship team, the owner of the Underground Utilities Incorporated number 15K, Mr. Jim Harbaugh and his driver from Finley, Ohio. We call him Mr. Consistent. Race fans, your 2003 All-Star Champion, give it up for Chad Kemenov.